Hi, I'm Andrew Berman from the Mortgage News Network. We're here in New York City at the MBA Secondary. I got David Fraze, who's the president of the Warehouse, uh, Warehouse Division for Southwest, Southwest Bank. Bank. Yes, sir, you got it. <laughs> Dave, thank you so much for joining us. I, I appreciate it. I, you know, I know you have a, a busy day, um, but I, I want to talk to you specifically about, uh, you know, where is it a good place to be in the mortgage business? If I was going to open up a mortgage company today, I was starting a, a brand new mortgage company today, um, obviously I'm going, to have, I'm going to have to crawl before I walk, um, but how would I start up that company and where is the best place to be in terms of profitability and growth and have control over your company? Well, I feel very strongly. If you're new to the mortgage business, obviously you need to start out as a broker. Yeah. You can learn the process. The brokers get the heavy support from the takeout investors on training, products, disclosure processes, et cetera. But um, once you've gotten comfortable and you've become an experienced originator, my personal bias, my belief is that the place to be is what we call non-Dell correspondent lending or mini correspondent, which is kind of really not the term to use any longer, but um, where you get a warehouse, get a small starter warehouse line from some of the providers that are out there, such as Southwest Bank, uh, and you start funding your own loans. It gives you a level playing field with the banks and the other larger mortgage companies that you're competing with. But the reason why I think it's the best space to be in is that you're still in the mortgage business, you're still functioning as a lender, but you've, you keep your costs variable. We've started the first business cycle we've had in this industry in probably 15 years, 12 years or so. We had a market meltdown in 2009, but that was not a business cycle. This is a classic business cycle. Mortgage rates go up, volume crimps off, refinances aren't around. Um, the larger lenders are gonna have a hard time covering their costs in a market like this. They have a very heavy overhead exposure that they can't trim very easily because they're trying to underwrite their own files. They're trying to make, you got to pay an underwriter, a compliance officer, all this. When you're a non dell correspondent, you are outsourcing your compliance costs to the wholesale investor. The investor will, is big enough to maintain that kind of infrastructure for compliance, docs, et cetera. All you're doing is keeping your costs variable and you can compete with the big guys because you're going to have a much lower margin than they are. You, you can operate on a lower margin. You're going to be competitive in the street. You're also the, if you're a good originator, you've got the relationships in the community that these large regionals don't have as good a job penetrating because they've been living on refinances for the last six years. So it's our belief that that model is what's going to survive. Low, low overhead, variable costs, variable income, and you, you make as much money as this, depending on how hard you work, but you're still operating as a lender. Therefore, from a compliance standpoint, from a disclosure, from a pricing flexibility, you can compete with anybody. I think that's the way to go. If you're a, there's a big difference between engaging your consumer and telling them, I believe in you, I'm gonna introduce you to a guy who's gonna make a loan to you. Or, I believe in you, I'm gonna risk my assets and my family to make you a loan. It changes your persona, changes the way you act in front of your consumer, it makes you more credible and the consumer is going to walk away more impressed with you when you're be able to say something like that. And when you're not at the uh, the mercy of the lender to make the decision and you have more control over that decision. Uh, absolutely, like a mortgage broker now. Uh, when you take the application, you got to pick the investor that day because the investor is going to do the disclosures for, yeah. to the client, which means you're not doing what a broker normally does. A broker's great benefit has always been to shop for the best program to fit to your consumer. Yeah. You've lost that ability to choose, right? But if you're a lender, you can issue a d generic disclosure that you issue yourself, and then you can get to know the borrower, start looking at his credit, the appraisal, et cetera, and figure out what's the best investor to bargain with. But as a broker, you don't get that luxury. So I'm a broker today, my, my shop set up, doing business. What does it take to, to grab the bull by the horns and to, to become a mortgage banker? Honestly, the market's gotten the market among warehouse lenders has gotten pretty competitive. So you merely just have to have the will to do it. I mean, we're going to want to see some liquidity. You're going to have to save some cash and demonstrate that you have the ability to generate wealth doing this line of business. Once you've demonstrated that and the experience to produce quality loans, there's a good a good number of warehouse lenders that be willing to talk to you and, and help you with that transition process and start the conversion process with you. So and. Net worth numbers, where, where do they usually start with, with uh, different warehouse lenders out there? Uh, 50,000 net worth, 60,000, somewhere in that place. Okay, so, uh, we're looking for liquidity more than net worth, but that's about the level where we want to see someone starting out. But that's personal and business combined. 
So like I said, it just about we have a lot of one man shops that are using warehouse lines successfully because um, there's not. Everybody thinks, oh, I've got to hire people if I'm going to use a warehouse line. That's not true. It really isn't. There's outsourced yeah, Back office? The, investor, the investors are going to do that work for you in a lot of cases, or there's third-party companies that will do that work for you. All you got to do is do what you do well. Originate a loan. Let everybody else handle it for you. But once you see the process, even if you're outsourcing, you're learning it. And then if you grow, if you add loan officers, and you want to start one to bring those processes in-house, do it one piece at a time. And you add it as you understand it. And But there's a great entry-level way where you've outsourced all the work, but you're still operating as a lender. Um, and you're still acting in a credible way with your consumer. So one last question, sure. um, I got to ask you, what additional risk is uh, that, that originator, is a mortgage broker out there right now, what are the, what's, the, what's really a, at risk for them to become a mortgage banker? Well, there, there's always, things can go wrong. I don't ever tell anybody that there's no risk in this process. You are letting the investor make the underwriting decision like you were before, but there's still a chance that something can go wrong while the loan's on your warehouse line. You fund the loan, you deliver to the investor, and during those few days, borrower could die. You know, uh, there could be a hurricane. You know, there's all sorts of things that can happen to your collateral, to your homeowner during that short time, and that's risk that you may face. But I've always said that if you have a good title policy and a good appraisal, you can get payback. There's a hundred ways to get payback if you have those two things. Yeah. And if you're using the right partners, you'll have that on every loan. David, thank you so much for taking the time out with us. Thank you. Now, I'm Andrew Berman with the Mortgage News Network. Thank you for watching. This is Mortgage News Network.